All right, we really need to talk about radiation. The frog on the left is a descendant of the frogs near the Chernobyl exclusion zone. You might notice that it looks a little bit different. Similarly, researchers have found melanated fungus there. What you're actually seeing are the descendants of critters that were exposed to radiation. It turns out that melanin is protective of radiation, and the researchers who discovered it believe that that fungus may actually be using radiation to fuel its molecular processes. That is really important. It means that it's something that could truly neutralize toxic waste and not just solidify it, which is what bacteria are used to do now. They also believe that they could grow it between the walls of spaceships to help protect astronauts from exposure. This wasn't the first time that they found fungus growing in these kinds of environments. In fact, the Mir space station, the Russian space station, they found fungus creepily crawl up the windows. The reason why this stuff pops up is twofold. Radiation does increase the rate of evolution. That is true. But it's not going to be good for you. It's going to be good for your offspring if they survive. Critters who can have a lot of offspring in a short amount of time do best. But it's still going to be quite random. It will be a gamble. Birds that live in the Chernobyl site, yes, they do have more DNA repair mechanisms that have evolved, but they're also increasing the amount of antioxidants they produce. For plants, they have a few more options. Every cell in a plant's body is a stem cell, so if something is mutated and not quite right, they can just cut off life to that part of it and grow something new. Plants' ability to reproduce really quickly also led to atomic gardening, where researchers would just throw things like cobalt that's radioactive into a field and see what grows. It was actually a fad for a while. Granted, not a very safe fad. It allowed them to get a ton of different varieties in a short amount of time, and it led to a lot of the plants that we still eat today that are on shelves. A lot of people would ask, is it radioactive then? No. The kind of radiation we're talking about here is ionizing radiation. It may knock off the electrons from your DNA and cause it to get weird, but it's not actively radioactive. That's why I used gamma radiation to sterilize lab equipment and soil, which doesn't work very well because fungus is frickin' immortal. Also, please don't play with radioactive stuff. Just because it might not make you radioactive doesn't mean it can't do a lot of damage. What happened in Chernobyl is awful, but that doesn't mean it hasn't left a legacy of good. Animals have re-inhabited it. Some of the only wild horses in the world live there. That does mean that a nuclear disaster is less deleterious to animals than humans. But it's also become a really important place for science. A lot of scientists study the area because it's something that nowhere else on Earth can offer. It helps us understand what kind of conditions humans will experience in space when they're not protected by our atmosphere. It can show us different kinds of antibiotic resistances, and may even lead to genes that could help treat cancer. And no, the dogs there are not actually healthier. There may be some genes for DNA repair that could be really applicable to human medicine. Also, please don't try to abduct one. It's just not a good idea. You can't go to the exclusion zone without a guide, and there is a war going on.